Palmyra slash PLMR slash Palmyrene TDMR dot PNG Tadmor, Arabic Tadmor is an ancient Semitic city in present day Homs Governorate, Syria. Archaeological finds date back to the Neolithic period, and documents first mention the city in the early 2nd millennium BC. Palmyra changed hands on a number of occasions between different empires before becoming a subject of the Roman Empire in the 1st century AD. The city grew wealthy from trade caravans. The Palmyrenes became renowned as merchants who established colonies along the Silk Road and operated throughout the Roman Empire. Palmyra's wealth enabled the construction of monumental projects, such as the Great Colonnade, the Temple of Bel, and the distinctive Tower Tombs. Ethnically, the Palmyrenes combined elements of Amorites, Arameans, and Arabs. The city's social structure was tribal, and its inhabitants spoke Palmyra in a dialect of Aramaic, while using Greek for commercial and diplomatic purposes. Greco Roman culture influenced the culture of Palmyra, which produced distinctive art and architecture that combined Eastern and Western traditions. The city's inhabitants worshipped local Semitic deities, Mesopotamian and Arab gods. By the 3rd century AD, Palmyra had become a prosperous regional center. It reached the apex of its power in the 260s when the Palmyrene king Odinatus defeated Persian Emperor Shaper of I. The king was succeeded by Regent Queen Zenobia, who rebelled against Rome and established the Palmyrene Empire. In 273, Roman Emperor Aurelian destroyed the city, which was later restored by Diocletian at a reduced size. The Palmyrenes converted to Christianity during the 4th century and to Islam in the centuries following the conquest by the 7th century Rashidun Caliphate, after which the Palmyrene and Greek languages were replaced by Arabic. Before AD 273, Palmyra enjoyed autonomy and was attached to the Roman province of Syria, having its political organization influenced by the Greek city-state model during the first two centuries AD. The city became a Roman colonia during the 3rd century, leading to the incorporation of Roman governing institutions, before becoming a monarchy in 260. Following its destruction in 273, Palmyra became a minor center under the Byzantines and later empires. Its destruction by the Timurids in 1400 reduced it to a small village. Under French mandatory rule in 1932, the inhabitants were moved into the new village of Todmor, and the ancient site became available for excavations. During the Syrian civil war in 2015, Palmyra came under the control of the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL, and subsequently changed hands several times between the militant group and the Syrian army who retook the city on March 2, 2017. ISIL sabotaged many artifacts and destroyed a number of buildings, considerably damaging the ancient site. Etymology The name Tadmor is known from the early 2nd millennium BC, 18th century BC tablets from Mari written in cuneiform record the name as Ta'admi'ir, while Assyrian inscriptions of the 11th century BC recorded as Ta'admarch Aramaic Palmyrene inscriptions themselves showed two variants of the name, Tdmrie Tadmor and Tdmwrie Tadmor. The etymology of the name is unclear. The standard interpretation, supported by Albert Schultens, connects it to the Semitic word for date palm, tamar, note one thus referring to the palm trees that surrounded the city. The Greek name Pi Alpha Lambda Mu Rho Alpha Latinized Palmyra is first recorded by Pliny the Elder in the 1st century AD. It was used throughout the Greco-Roman world. It is generally believed that Palmyra derives from Tadmor and two possibilities have been presented by linguists. One view holds that Palmyra was an alteration of Tadmor. According to the suggestion by Shultens, Palmyra could have arisen as a corruption of Tadmor, via an unattested form Talmora, changed to Palmora by influence of the Latin word palmidate palm, in reference to the city's palm trees, then the name reached its final form Palmyra. The second view, supported by some philologists, such as Jean Starkey, holds that Palmyra is a translation of Tadmor assuming that it meant palm, which had derived from the Greek word for palm, flame. An alternative suggestion connects the name to the Syriac Ted Murta miracle, hence Ted Murta an object of wonder, from the root DMR to wonder, this possibility was mentioned favorably by Franz Altheim and Ruth Altheim Steele 1973, but rejected by Jean Starkey 1960 and Michael Golikowski 1974. Michael Patrick O'Connor 1988 suggested that the names Palmyra and Tadmor originated in the Hurrian language. As evidence, he cited the inexplicability of alterations to the theorized roots of both names represented in the addition of D to Tamar and Ra to Palaim. According to this theory, Tadmor derives from the Hurrian word Tad to love with the addition of the typical Hurrian mid-vowel rising MVR form at March. Similarly, according to this theory, Palomyra derives from the Hurrian word Pal to know using the same MVR form at March. Location and City Layout 
Palmyra is 215 kilometers 134 miles northeast of the Syrian capital, Damascus, in an oasis surrounded by palms of which 20 varieties have been reported. Two mountain ranges overlook the city, the northern Pomiran mountain belt from the north and the southern Pomiran mountains from the southwest. In the south and the east Palmyra is exposed to the Syrian desert. A small Wadi Akbar crosses the area, flowing from the western hills past the city before disappearing in the eastern gardens of the oasis. South of the Wadi is a spring, Efka. Pliny the Elder described the town in the 70s AD as famous for its desert location, the richness of its soil, and the springs surrounding it which made agriculture and herding possible. Note 2. Layout Palmyra began as a small settlement near the Efka Spring on the southern bank of Wadi Akbar. The settlement, known as the Hellenistic Settlement, had residences expanding to the Wadi's northern bank during the first century. Although the city's walls originally enclosed an extensive area on both banks of the Wadi, the walls rebuilt during Diocletian's reign surrounded only the northern bank section. Most of the city's monumental projects were built on the Wadi's northern bank. Among them is the Temple of Bel, on a tell which was the site of an earlier temple known as the Hellenistic Temple. However, excavation supports the theory that the tell was originally located on the southern bank, and the wadi was diverted south of the tell to incorporate the temple into Palmyra's late 1st and early 2nd century urban organization on the north bank. Also north of the wadi was the Great Colonnade, Palmyra's 1.1 km long 0.68 miles main street, which extended from the Temple of Bel in the east to the funerary temple number 86 in the city's western part. It had a monumental arch in its eastern section, and a tetrapylon stands in the center. The Baths of Diocletian, built on the ruins of an earlier building which might have been the royal palace, were on the left side of the colonnade. Nearby were residences, the Temple of Belshaman, and the Byzantine churches, which include Basilica IV, Palmyra's largest church. The church is dated to the Justinian age, its columns are estimated to be 7 meters 23 feet high and its base measured 27.5 by 47.5 meters 90 by 156 feet. The Temple of Naboo and the Roman Theater were built on the colonnade's southern side. Behind the theater were a small senate building and the large agora, with the remains of a triclinium banquet room in the tariff court. A cross street at the western end of the colonnade leads to the camp of Diocletian, built by Sojanus Heracles the Roman governor of Syria. Nearby are the Temple of Alad and the Damascus Gate. People language and society. At its height during the reign of Zenobia, Palmyra had more than 200,000 residents. Its earliest known inhabitants were the Amorites in the early 2nd millennium BC, and by the end of the millennium Arameans were mentioned as inhabiting the area. Arabs arrived in the city in the late 1st millennium BC. The soldiers of the Sheikh Zabdabel, who aided the Seleucids in the Battle of Raphia 217 BC, were described as Arabs. Zabdabel and his men were not actually identified as Palmyrenes in the texts. But the name Zabdabel is a Palmyrene name leading to the conclusion that the Sheik hailed from Palmyra. The Arab newcomers were assimilated by the earlier inhabitants, used Palmyrene as a mother tongue, and formed a significant segment of the aristocracy. The city also had a Jewish community. Inscriptions in Palmyrene from the necropolis of Beit Shirim in Lower Galilee confirm the burial of Palmyrene Jews. Occasionally and rarely, members of the Palmyrene families took Greek names while ethnic Greeks were few. The majority of people with Greek names who did not belong to one of the city's families, were freed slaves. The Palmyrenes seemed to have disliked the Greeks, considered them foreigners, and restricted their settlement in the city. Until the late 3rd century AD, Palmyrenes spoke a dialect of Aramaic and used the Palmyrene alphabet. No 3 The use of Latin was minimal, but Greek was used by wealthier members of society for commercial and diplomatic purposes, and it became the dominant language during the Byzantine era. After the Arab conquest, Greek was replaced by Arabic from which a Palmyrene dialect evolved. Palmyra's society was a mixture of the different peoples inhabiting the city, which is seen in Aramaic, Arabic and Amorite clan names. Note 4 Palmyra was a tribal community but due to the lack of sources, an understanding of the nature of Palmyrene tribal structure is not possible. Thirty clans have been documented, five of which were identified as tribes file phi upsilon lambda comprising several subclans. Note 5 By the time of Nero Palmyra had four tribes each residing in an area of the city bearing its name. Three of the tribes were the Khmer, Matabal and Mazan. The fourth tribe is uncertain, but was probably the Mita. In time, the four tribes became highly civic and tribal lines blurred. Note 6 By the 2nd century clan identity lost its importance, and it disappeared during the 3rd century. Note 7 Even the four tribes ceased to be important by the 3rd century as only one inscription mentions a tribe after the year 212. Instead, 
aristocrats played the decisive role in the city's social organization. During the Umawe period Palmyra was mainly inhabited by the Kalb tribe. Benjamin of Tudela recorded the existence of 2,000 Jews in the city during the 12th century. Palmyra declined after its destruction by Timor in 1400, and was a village of 6,000 inhabitants at the beginning of the 20th century, although surrounded by Bedouin. The villagers preserved their dialect. Palmyra maintained the life of a small settlement until its relocation in 1932. Culture The scarce artifacts found in the city dating to the Bronze Age reveal that, culturally, Palmyra was most affiliated with Western Syria. Classical Palmyra had a distinctive culture, based on a local Semitic tradition, and influenced by Greece and Rome. Note to appear better integrated into the Roman Empire, some Palmyrenes adopted Greco Roman names, either alone or in addition to a second native name. The extent of Greek influence on Palmyra's culture is debated. Scholars interpreted the Palmyrenes' Greek practices differently, many see those characters as a superficial layer over a local essence. Palmyra's Senate was an example, although Palmyrene texts written in Greek described it as a Bula Greek institution, the Senate was a gathering of non-elected tribal elders in Near Eastern Assembly tradition. Others view Palmyra's culture as a fusion of local and Greco-Roman traditions. The culture of Persia influenced Palmyrene military tactics, dress and court ceremonies. Palmyra had no large libraries or publishing facilities, and it lacked an intellectual movement characteristic of other eastern cities such as Edessa or Antioch. Although Zenobia opened her court to academics, the only notable scholar documented was Cassius Longinus. Palmyra had a large agora. Note 9 However, unlike the Greek agora's public gathering places shared with public buildings, Palmyra's agora resembled an eastern caravanserai more than a hub of public life. The Palmyrenes buried their dead in elaborate family mausoleums, most with interior walls forming rows of burial chambers loculi in which the dead, laying at full length, were placed. A relief of the person interred formed part of the wall's decoration, acting as a headstone. Sarcophagi appeared in the late 2nd century and were used in some of the tombs. Many burial monuments contain mummies embalmed in a method similar to that used in ancient Egypt. Art and Architecture Although Palmyrene art was related to that of Greece, it had a distinctive style unique to the Middle Euphrates region. Palmyrene art is well represented by the bust reliefs which seal the openings of its burial chambers. The reliefs emphasized clothing, jewelry and a frontal representation of the person depicted, characteristics which can be seen as a forerunner of Byzantine art. According to Michael Rostovtsev, Palmyra's art was influenced by Parthian art. However, the origin of frontality that characterized Palmyrene and Parthian arts is a controversial issue, while Parthian origin has been suggested by Daniel Schlumberger, Michael Aviona contends that it was a local Syrian tradition that influenced Parthian art. Little painting, and none of the bronze statues of prominent citizens which stood on brackets on the main columns of the Great Colonnade, have survived. A damaged frieze and other sculptures from the Temple of Bel, many removed to museums in Syria and abroad, suggest the city's public monumental sculpture. Many surviving funerary busts reached Western museums during the 19th century. Palomira provided the most convenient Eastern examples bolstering an art history controversy at the turn of the 20th century to what extent Eastern influence on Roman art replaced idealized classicism with frontal, hieratic and simplified figures as believed by Joseph Strzagowski and others. This transition is seen as a response to cultural changes in the Western Roman Empire, rather than artistic influence from the East. Palmyrene bust reliefs unlike Roman sculptures, are rudimentary portraits, although many reflect high-quality individuality, the majority very little across figures of similar age and gender. Like its art, Palmyra's architecture was influenced by the Greco-Roman style, while preserving local elements best seen in the Temple of Bel. Note 10 enclosed by a massive wall flanked with traditional Roman columns, Bel's sanctuary plan was primarily Semitic. Similar to the Second Temple, the sanctuary consisted of a large courtyard with the deity's main shrine off-center against its entrance a plan preserving elements of the temples of Ebla and Ugarit. Site Cemeteries West of the ancient walls, the Palmyrenes built a number of large-scale funerary monuments which now form the Valley of Tombs, a 1-kilometer-long 0.62 miles necropolis. The more than 50 monuments were primarily tower-shaped and up to four stories high. Towers were replaced by funerary temples in the first half of the 2nd century AD as the most recent tower is dated to AD 128. The city had other cemeteries in the north, southwest and southeast, where the tombs are primarily hypogea underground. Notable structures, public buildings, further information camp of Diocletian and Roman theater at Palmyra. The Senate building is largely ruined. 
It is a small building that consists of a peristyle courtyard and a chamber that has an apse at one end and rows of seats around it. Much of the baths of Diocletian are ruined and do not survive above the level of the foundations. The complex's entrance is marked by four massive Egyptian granite columns each 1.3 meters 4 feet 3 in, in diameter, 12.5 meters 41 feet high and weigh 20 tons. Inside, the outline of a bathing pool surrounded by a colonnade of Corinthian columns is still visible in addition to an octagonal room that served as a dressing room containing a drain in its center. The Agora of Palmyra is part of a complex that also includes the Tariff Court and the Triclinium, built in the second half of the 1st century AD. The Agora is a massive 71 by 84 meters 233 by 276 feet structure with 11 entrances. Inside the Agora, 200 columnar bases that used to hold statues of prominent citizens were found. The inscriptions on the bases allowed an understanding of the order by which the statues were grouped. The eastern side was reserved for senators, the northern side for Pomeranian officials, the western side for soldiers and the southern side for caravan chiefs. The tariff court is a large rectangular enclosure south of the Agora and sharing its northern wall with it. Originally, the entrance of the court was a massive vestibule in its southwestern wall. However, the entrance was blocked by the construction of a defensive wall and the court was entered through three doors from the Agora. The court gained its name by containing a 5 meters long stone slab that had the Pomeranian tax law inscribed on it. The triclinium of the Agora is located to the northwestern corner of the Agora and can host up to 40 person. It is a small 12 by 15 meters 39 by 49 feet hall decorated with Greek key motifs that run in a continuous line halfway up the wall. The building was probably used by the rulers of the city. Henri Arnold Sarig proposed that it was a small temple before being turned into a triclinium or banqueting hall. Temples The Temple of Bell was dedicated in AD 32. It consisted of a large precinct lined by porticos, it had a rectangular shape and was oriented north south. The exterior wall was 205 meters 673 feet long with a propylia, and the cella stood on a podium in the middle of the enclosure. The Temple of Belshaman dates to the late 2nd century BC in its earliest phases, its altar was built in AD 115, and it was substantially rebuilt in AD 131. It consisted of a central cell and two colonnaded courtyards north and south of the central structure. A vestibule consisting of six columns preceded the cella which had its side walls decorated with pilasters in Corinthian order. The Temple of Naboo is largely ruined. The temple was eastern in its plan. The outer enclosure's propylia led to a 20 by 9 meters 66 by 30 feet podium through a portico of which the bases of the columns survives. The peristyle cella opened onto an outdoor altar. The Temple of Alad is largely ruined with only a podium, a few columns and the door frame remaining. Inside the compound, a giant lion relief lion of Alat was excavated and in its original form, was a relief protruding from the temple compound's wall. The ruined temple of Balaman was located on the top of Jabal al-Muntar hill which oversees the spring of Efka. Constructed in AD 89, it consisted of a cell and a vestibule with two columns. The temple had a defensive tower attached to it, a mosaic depicting the sanctuary was excavated and it revealed that both the cell and the vestibule were decorated with merlins. Other buildings The Great Colonnade was Palmyra's 1.1 km long 0.68 miles Main Street. Most of the columns date to the 2nd century AD and each is 9.50 meters 31.2 feet high. The funerary temple number 86 also known as the house tomb is located at the western end of the Great Colonnade. It was built in the 3rd century AD and has a portico of six columns and vine patterns carvings. Inside the chamber, steps leads down to a vault crypt. The shrine might have been connected to the royal family as it is the only tomb inside the city's walls. The tetrapylon was erected during the renovations of Diocletian at the end of the 3rd century. It is a square platform and each corner contains a grouping of four columns. Each column group supports a 150 tons cornice and contains a pedestal in its center that originally carried a statue. Out of 16 columns, only one is original while the rest are from reconstruction work by the Syrian Directorate General of Antiquities in 1963, using concrete. The original columns were brought from Egypt and carved out of pink granite. The city's current walls were erected during the reign of Diocletian whose fortification of the city enclosed about 80 hectares, a much smaller area than the original pre-273 city. The Diocletianic walls had protective towers and fortified gateways. The pre-273 walls were narrow and while encircling the whole city, they do not seem to have provided real protection against an invasion. No signs of towers or fortified gates exist and it cannot be proven that the walls enclose the city as many gaps appears to have never been defended. 
The earlier walls seem to have been designed to protect the city against Bedouins and to provide a costume barrier. Destruction by ISIL According to eyewitnesses, on May 23, 2015 the militants destroyed the Lion of Allah and other statues, this came days after the militants gathered the citizens and promised not to destroy the city's monuments. ISIL destroyed the Temple of Baal Shaman on August 23, 2015 according to Syria's Antiquities Chief Mahmoud Abdul Karim and activists. On August 30, 2015, ISIL destroyed the cell of the Temple of Bel. On August 31, 2015, the United Nations confirmed the temple was destroyed, the temple's exterior walls and entrance arch remain. It became known on September 4, 2015 that ISIL had destroyed three of the best preserved tower tombs including the Tower of Alabel. On October 5, 2015, news media reported that ISIL was destroying buildings with no religious meaning, including the Arch of Triumph. On January 20, 2017, News emerged that the militants had destroyed the tetrapylon and part of the theater. Following the March 2017 capture of Palmyra by the Syrian army, Mahmoud Abdul Karim, director of antiquities and museums at the Syrian Ministry of Culture, stated that the damage to ancient monuments may be lesser than earlier believed and preliminary pictures showed almost no further damage than what was already known. Antiquities official Yael Hafayan stated that the tetrapylon was badly damaged while the damage to the facade of the Roman theater was less serious in relativity restoration. In response to the destruction, on October 21, 2015, Creative Commons started the new Palmyra Project, an online repository of three-dimensional models representing the city's monuments. The models were generated from images gathered, and released into the public domain, by the Syrian internet advocate Basil Cartable between 2005 and 2012. Consultations with the UNESCO, UN specialized agencies, archaeological associations and museums produced plans to restore Palmyra. The work is postponed until the violence in Syria ends as many international partners fear for the safety of their teams as well as ensuring that the restored artifacts will not be damaged again by further battles. Minor restorations took place, two Pomyrene funerary busts, damaged and defaced by ISIL, were sent off to Rome where they were restored and sent back to Syria. The restoration of the Lion of Allah took two months and the statue was displayed in October 1, 2017. It will remain in the National Museum of Damascus. Regarding the restoration, the discoverer of Ebla, Paolo Mathai, stated that the archaeological site of Palmyra is a vast field of ruins and only 20 to 30 percent of it is seriously damaged. Unfortunately these included important parts, such as the Temple of Bel, while the Ark of Triumph can be rebuilt. He added in any case, by using both traditional methods and advanced technologies, it might be possible to restore 98 percent of the site. History The site at Palmyra provided evidence for a Neolithic settlement near Efka with stone tools dated to 7500 BC. Archaeological sounding in the tell beneath the Temple of Bel uncovered a mud brick structure built around 2500 BC, followed by structures built during the Middle Bronze Age and Iron Age. Early period The city entered the historical record during the Bronze Age around 2000 BC, when Puzur Ishtar the Tabmori and Pomirin agreed to a contract at an Assyrian trading colony in Kiltip. It was mentioned next in the Mari tablets as a stop for trade caravans and nomadic tribes, such as the Sudians, and was conquered along with its region by Yad Unlim of Mari. King Shamshi Adad I of Assyria passed through the area on his way to the Mediterranean at the beginning of the 18th century BC. By then, Palmyra was the easternmost point of the Kingdom of Khatna, and it was attacked by the Sudians who paralyzed the traffic along the trade routes. Palmyra was mentioned in a 13th century BC tablet discovered at MR, which recorded the names of two Tabmorian witnesses. At the beginning of the 11th century BC, King Tiglath Pileser I of Assyria recorded his defeat of the Aramaeans of Tadmar. According to the king, Palmyra was part of the land of Amuru. The city became the eastern border of Aram Damascus, which was conquered by the Neo Assyrian Empire in 732 BC. The Hebrew Bible Second Book of Chronicles 84 records a city by the name Tadmor as a desert city built or fortified by King Solomon of Israel. Flavius Josephus mentions the Greek name Palmyra, attributing its founding to Solomon in Book 8 of his Antiquities of the Jews. Later Arabic traditions attribute the city's founding to Solomon's jinn. The association of Palmyra with Solomon is a conflation of Tadmor and a city built by Solomon in Judea known as Tamar in the books of Kings 1 Kings 918. The biblical description of Tadmor and its buildings does not fit archaeological findings in Palmyra, which was a small settlement during Solomon's reign in the 10th century BC. Hellenistic and Roman periods During the Hellenistic period under the Seleucids between 312 and 64 BC, Palmyra became a prosperous settlement owing allegiance to the Seleucid king. In 217 BC, 
A Pomirene force led by Zabdabel joined the army of King Antiochus III in the Battle of Raphia which ended in a Seleucid defeat by Ptolemaic Egypt. In the middle of the Hellenistic era, Palmyra, formerly south of the Akbar Wadi, began to expand beyond its northern bank. By the late 2nd century BC, the tower tombs in the Pomirene Valley of Tombs and the city temples most notably, the temples of Belshaman, Alad and the Hellenistic Temple began to be built. A fragmentary inscription from the Temple of Bel's foundations mentions a king named Antiochus Epiphanes, Serig identified him with Antiochus XII and the inscription indicates that the city was important enough to draw the attention of a Seleucid king. In 64 BC the Roman Republic conquered the Seleucid Kingdom, and the Roman general Pompey established the province of Syria. Palmyra was left independent, trading with Roman Parthia but belonging to neither. The earliest known Palmyrene inscription is dated to around 44 BC. Palmyra was still a minor sheikdom, offering water to caravans which occasionally took the desert route on which it was located. However, according to Appian, Palmyra was wealthy enough for Mark Antony to send a force to conquer it in 41 BC. The Palmyrenes evacuated to Parthia in the lands beyond the eastern bank of the Euphrates, which they prepared to defend. Autonomous Palmyrene Region Palmyra became part of the Roman Empire when it was conquered and paid tribute early in the reign of Tiberius, around 14 AD. Note 11 The Romans included Palmyra in the province of Syria, and defined the region's boundaries. A boundary marker laid by Roman Governor Silanus was found 75 kilometers 47 miles northwest of the city at Hurbat el Bialias. A marker at the city's southwestern border was found at Qaisar al Hair al Garbi, and its eastern border extended to the Euphrates Valley. This region included numerous villages subordinate to the center such as al 35 other settlements have been identified by 2012. The Roman imperial period brought great prosperity to the city, which enjoyed a privileged status under the imperial retaining much of its internal autonomy, being ruled by a council, and incorporating many Greek city-state polis institutions into its government. Note 12. The earliest Palmyrene text attesting a Roman presence in the city dates to 18 AD. When the Roman general Germanicus tried to develop a friendly relationship with Parthia, he sent the Palmyrene Alexandrus to Messene, a Parthian vassal kingdom. Note 13 This was followed by the arrival of the Roman legion Legio X Fretensis the following year. Note 14 Roman authority was minimal during the 1st century AD, although tax collectors were resident, and a road connecting Palmyra and Sura was built in AD 75. Note 15 The Romans used Palmyrene soldiers. But unlike typical Roman cities no local magistrates or prefects are recorded in the city. Palmyra saw intensive construction during the first century, including the city's first walled fortifications, and the Temple of Bel completed and dedicated in 32 AD. During the first century Palmyra developed from a minor desert caravan station into a leading trading center, note 16 with Palmyrene merchants establishing colonies and surrounding trade centers. Palmyrene trade reached its apex during the second century, aided by two factors. The first was a trade route built by Palmyrenes, and protected by garrisons at major locations, including a garrison in Dura Europo manned in 117 AD. The second was the Roman conquest of the Nabataean capital Petra in 106, shifting control over southern trade routes of the Arabian Peninsula from the Nabataeans to Palmyra. Note 17. In 129, Palmyra was visited by Hadrian, who named it Hadrian Palmyra and made it a free city. Hadrian promoted Hellenism throughout the empire and Palmyra's urban expansion was modeled on that of Greece. This led to new projects, including the theater, the colonnade and the Temple of Nabu. Roman garrisons are first attested in Palmyra in 167, when the cavalry Alabama Ithracum Herculeano was moved to the city. Note 18 By the end of the 2nd century, urban development diminished after the city's building projects peaked. In the 190s, Palmyra was assigned to the province of Phoenix, newly created by the Severan dynasty. Toward the end of the 2nd century, Palmyra began a steady transition from a traditional Greek city-state to a monarchy due to the increasing militarization of the city and the deteriorating economic situation. The Severan ascension to the imperial throne in Rome played a major role in Palmyra's transition. The Severan-led Roman Parthian War, from 194 to 217, influenced regional security and affected the city's trade. Bandits began attacking caravans by 199 leading Palmyra to strengthen its military presence. The new dynasty favored the city, stationing the cohorts I Flavia Chalcedinorum garrison there by 206. Caracalla made Palmyra a colonia between 213 and 216, replacing many Greek institutions with Roman constitutional ones. Severus Alexander, emperor from 222 to 235, visited Palmyra in 229. 
Pomirene Kingdom, the rise of the Sasanian Empire in Persia considerably damaged Pomirene trade. The Sasanians disbanded Pomirene colonies in their lands, and began a war against the Roman Empire. In an inscription dated to 252 Odinatus appears bearing the title of Exarchos Lord of Palmyra. The weakness of the Roman Empire and the constant Persian danger were probably the reasons behind the Pomirene Council's decision to elect a lord for the city in order for him to lead a strengthened army. Odinatus approached Shaper I of Persia to request him to guarantee Pomirene interests in Persia, but was rebuffed. In 260 the Emperor Valerian fought Shaper at the Battle of Edessa, but was defeated and captured. One of Valerian's officers, Macrianus Major, his sons Quietus and Macrianus, and the prefect Ballista rebelled against Valerian's son Gallianus, usurping imperial power in Syria. Persian Wars Odinatus formed an army of Pomirenes and Syrian peasants against Shaper. Note 19 According to the Augustan history, Odinatus declared himself king prior to the battle. The Pomirene leader won a decisive victory near the banks of the Euphrates later in 260, forcing the Persians to retreat. In 261, Odinatus marched against the remaining usurpers in Syria, defeating and killing Quietus and Ballista. As a reward, he received the title Imperator Todius Orientis Governor of the East from Gallianus, and ruled Syria, Mesopotamia, Arabia and Anatolia's eastern regions as the imperial representative. Palmyra itself remained officially part of the empire but Palmyrian inscriptions started to describe it as a metrocolonia, indicating that the city's status was higher than normal Roman colonias. In practice, Palmyra shifted from a provincial city to a de facto allied kingdom. In 262 Odinatus launched a new campaign against Shaper, reclaiming the rest of Roman Mesopotamia most importantly, the cities of Nisibis and Kare, sacking the Jewish city of Nhardia, Note 20 and besieging the Persian capital Tesiphon. Following his victory, the Pomirene monarch assumed the title King of Kings. Note 21 Later, Odinatus crowned his son Herani as co-king of kings near Antioch in 263. Although he did not take the Persian capital, Odinatus drove the Persians out of all Roman lands conquered since the beginning of Shaper's Wars in 252. In a second campaign that took place in 266, the Pomirene king reached Tesiphon again, however, he had to leave the siege and move north, accompanied by Herani, to repel Gothic attacks on Asia Minor. The king and his son were assassinated during their return in 267, according to the Augustan history and Ioannes Zoneris. Odinatus was killed by a cousin Zoneris says nephew named in the history as Meonius. The Augustan history also says that Meonius was proclaimed emperor for a brief period before being killed by the soldiers. However, no inscriptions or other evidence exist for Meonius' reign. Odinatus was succeeded by his son, the ten-year-old Vibalathus. Zenobia, the mother of the new king, was the de facto ruler and Vibalathus remained in her shadow while she consolidated her power. Gallianus dispatched his prefect Heraclion to command military operations against the Persians, but he was marginalized by Zenobia and returned to the west. The queen was careful not to provoke Rome, claiming for herself and her son the titles held by her husband while guaranteeing the safety of the borders with Persia and pacifying the Tanakids in Huron. To protect the borders with Persia, Zenobia fortified different settlements on the Euphrates including the citadels of Halabia and Zalabi. Circumstantial evidence exists for confrontations with the Sasanians, probably in 269 Vibalathus took the title Persicus Maximus the great victor in Persia and the title might be linked with an unrecorded battle against a Persian army trying to regain control of northern Mesopotamia. Pomirene Empire Zenobia began her military career in the spring of 270, during the reign of Claudius Gothicus. Under the pretext of attacking the Tonicids, she conquered Roman Arabia. This was followed in October by an invasion of Egypt, ending with a Pomirene victory and Zenobia's proclamation as Queen of Egypt. Palmyra invaded Anatolia the following year, reaching Ankara and the pinnacle of its expansion. The conquests were made behind a mask of subordination to Rome. Zenobia issued coins in the name of Claudius' successor Aurelian, with Vibalathus depicted as king. No 22 since Aurelian was occupied with repelling insurgencies in Europe, he tolerated the Pomirene coinage and encroachments. In late 271, Vibalathus and his mother assumed the titles of Augustus Emperor and Augusta. No 23. The following year, Aurelian crossed the Bosphorus and advanced quickly through Anatolia. According to one account, Roman general Marcus Aurelius Probus regained Egypt from Palmyra. No 24 Aurelian entered issues and headed to Antioch where he defeated Zenobia in the Battle of Emei. Zenobia was defeated again at the Battle of Emesa, taking refuge in homes before quickly returning to her capital. When the Romans besieged Palmyra, 
Zenobia refused their order to surrender in person to the emperor. She escaped east to ask the Persians for help, but was captured by the Romans. The city capitulated soon afterwards. Later Roman and Byzantine periods, Aurelian spared the city and stationed a garrison of 600 archers, led by Sondarian, as a peacekeeping force. In 273 Palmyra rebelled under the leadership of Septimius Apsios, declaring Antiochus a relative of Zenobia as Augustus. Aurelian marched against Palmyra, raising it to the ground and seizing the most valuable monuments to decorate his Temple of Saul. Palmyrene buildings were smashed, residents massacred and the Temple of Bel pillaged. Palmyra was reduced to a village and it largely disappeared from historical records of that period. Aurelian repaired the Temple of Bel, and the Legio Iolyricorum was stationed in the city. Shortly before 303 the camp of Diocletian, a castor in the western part of the city, was built. The 4-hectare 9.9-acre camp was a base for the Legio Iolyricorum, which guarded the trade routes around the city. Palmyra became a Christian city in the decades following its destruction by Aurelian. In late 527, Justinian I ordered its fortification and the restoration of its churches and public buildings to protect the empire against raids by Alakmid King Almunder III ibn al numan Arab Caliphates Palmyra was conquered by the Rashidun Caliphate after its 634 capture by the Muslim general Khalid ibn al-Walid, who took the city on his way to Damascus, an 18-day march by his army through the Syrian desert from Mesopotamia. By then Palmyra was limited to the Diocletian camp. After the conquest, the city became part of Homs province. Umayyad and early Abbasid periods, Palmyra prospered as part of the Umayyad Caliphate, and its population grew. It was a key stop on the east-west trade route, with a large souk market, built by the Umayyads, who also commissioned part of the Temple of Bel as a mosque. During this period, Palmyra was a stronghold of the Banu Kalb tribe. After being defeated by Marwan II during a civil war in the Caliphate, Umayyad contender Suleiman ibn Hisham fled to the Banu Kalb in Palmyra but eventually pledged allegiance to Marwan in 744, Palmyra continued to oppose Marwan until the surrender of the Banu Kalb leader al abrash al-Kalbi in 745. That year, Marwan ordered the city's walls demolished. In 750 a revolt, led by Mejza ibn al-Kawthar and Umaway pretender Abu Muhammad al-Sufayani, against the new Abbasid Caliphate swept across Syria, the tribes in Palmyra supported the rebels. After his defeat Abu Muhammad took refuge in the city, which withstood an Abbasid assault long enough to allow him to escape. Decentralization Abbasid power dwindled during the 10th century, when the empire disintegrated and was divided among a number of vassals. Most of the new rulers acknowledged the caliph as their nominal sovereign, a situation which continued until the Mongol destruction of the Abbasid Caliphate in 1258. In 955 Saif al-Dala, the Hamdanid prince of Aleppo, defeated the nomads near the city and built a Kasbah fortress in response to campaigns by the Byzantine emperors Nikephoros II Phokas and John Knight Semisks. After the early 11th century Hamdanid collapse, the region of Homs was controlled by the successor Merdasid dynasty. Earthquakes devastated Palmyra in 1068 and 1089. In the 1070s Syria was conquered by the Seljuk Empire, and in 1082, the district of Homs came under the control of Kalaf, the head of the Malib tribe. The aforementioned was a brigand and was removed and imprisoned in 1090 by the Saluk Sultan Malik Shah I. Karloff's lands were given to Malik Shah's brother, Tutush I, who gained his independence after his brother's 1092 death and established the cadet branch of the Seljuk dynasty in Syria. During the early 12th century Palmyra was ruled by Todakin, the Burid Atabeg of Damascus, who appointed his nephew governor. Todakin's nephew was killed by rebels, and the Atabeg retook the city in 1126. Palmyra was given to Todakin's grandson, Shihabuddin Mahmud, who was replaced by Governor Yusuf ibn Firuz when Shihabuddin Mahmud returned to Damascus after his father Taj al-Maluk Buri succeeded Todakin. The Burids transformed the Temple of Bel into a citadel in 1132, fortifying the city, and transferring it to the Binkaraya family three years later in exchange for homes. During the mid-12th century, Palmyra was ruled by the Zanjid king Nu'ad-Din Mahmud. It became part of the district of Homs, which was given as a fiefdom to the Ayyubid general Shirka in 1168 and confiscated after his death in 1169. Homs region was conquered by the Ayyubid Sultanate in 1174. The following year, Saladin gave Homs including Palmyra to his cousin Nasir al-Din Muhammad as a fiefdom. After Saladin's death, the Ayyubid realm was divided and Palmyra was given to Nasir al-Din Muhammad's son al-Mujahid Shirka II who built the castle of Palmyra known as Fakral din al-Mani castle around 1230. Five years earlier, 
Syrian geographer Yaqub al-Hamawi described Palmyra's residents as living in a castle surrounded by a stone wall. Mamluk period, Palmyra was used as a refuge by Shirkatu's grandson, Al-Ashraf Musa, who allied himself with the Mongol king Hulagu Khan and fled after the Mongol defeat in the 1260 Battle of Ain Jalut against the Mamluks. Al-Ashraf Musa asked the Mamluk Sultan Qus for pardon and was accepted as a vassal. Al-Ashraf Musa died in 1263 without an heir, bringing the Homs district under direct Mamluk rule. Al-Fatal Principality The Al-Fatal clan a branch of the Thai tribe were loyal to the Mamluks, and in 1281, Prince Isa bin Mahana of the Al-Fatal was appointed Lord of Palmyra by Sultan Kalan. Isa was succeeded in 1284 by his son Mahana bin Isa who was imprisoned by Sultan al-Ashraf Khalil in 1293, and restored two years later by Sultan al-Adil Kitpfa. Mahana declared his loyalty to Ol Haichu of the Ilkhanate in 1312 and was dismissed and replaced with his brother Fatal by Sultan and Nasir Muhammad. Although Mahana was forgiven by an Nasir and restored in 1317, he and his tribe were expelled in 1320 for his continued relations with the Ilkhanate, and he was replaced by tribal chief Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. Mahana was forgiven and restored by an Nasir in 1330, he remained loyal to the Sultan until his death in 1335, when he was succeeded by his son. Contemporary historian Ibn Fadlala al-Omari described the city as having vast gardens, flourishing trades and bizarre monuments. The Al-Fatal clan protected the trade routes and villages from Bedouin raids, raiding other cities and fighting among themselves. The Mamluks intervened militarily several times, dismissing, imprisoning or expelling its leaders. In 1400 Palmyra was attacked by Timur, the Fatal Prince Nuer escaped the battle and later fought Jakam, the Sultan of Aleppo. Nuer was captured, taken to Aleppo and executed in 1406, this, according to Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, ended the Al-Fatal clan's power. Ottoman era and later periods, Syria became part of the Ottoman Empire in 1516, and Palmyra was a center of an administrative district Sanyak. Note 25 During the Ottoman era, Palmyra was a small village in the courtyard of the Temple of Bel. After 1568 the Ottomans appointed the Lebanese prince Ali bin Musa Harfush as governor of Palmyra's Sanyak, dismissing him in 1584 for treason. In 1630 Palmyra came under the authority of another Lebanese prince, Fakral Din II, who renovated Shirkatu's castle which became known as Fakral Din Almani Castle. The prince fell from grace with the Ottomans in 1633 and lost control of the village, which remained a separate Sanyak until it was absorbed by Zor Sanyak in 1857. The village became home to an Ottoman garrison to control the Bedouin in 1867. In 1918, as World War I was ending, the Royal Air Force built an airfield for two planes, Note 26 And in November the Ottomans retreated from Zor Sanyak without a fight. Note 27 The Syrian Emirates Army entered Deir ez Zor on 4th of December, and Zor Sanyak became part of Syria. In 1919, as the British and French argued over the borders of the planned mandates, the British permanent military representative to the Supreme War Council Henry Wilson suggested adding Palmyra to the British mandate. However, the British General Edmund Allenby persuaded his government to abandon this plan. Syria including Palmyra became part of the French mandate after Syria's defeat in the Battle of Maysaloon on July 24, 1920. As Palmyra gained importance to French efforts to pacify the Syrian desert, a base was constructed in the village near the Temple of Bel in 1921. In 1929 the General Director of Antiquities in Syria, Henri Arnold Sarig, began excavating the ruins and convinced the villagers to move to a new, French-built village next to the site. The relocation was completed in 1932. Ancient Palmyra was ready for excavation as its villagers settled into the new village of Todmore. During World War II, the mandate came under the authority of Vichy France, who gave permission to Nazi Germany to use the airfield at Palmyra. Forces of Free France, backed by British forces, invaded Syria in June 1941, and on July 3, 1941, the British took control over the city in the aftermath of a battle. Syrian Civil War As a result of the Syrian Civil War, Palmyra experienced widespread looting and damage by combatants. In 2013, the facade of the Temple of Bel sustained a large hole from mortar fire, and colonnade columns have been damaged by shrapnel. According to Mahmoud Abdul Karim, the Syrian army positioned its troops in some archaeological site areas, while Syrian opposition fighters positioned themselves in gardens around the city. On May 13, 2015, ISIL launched an attack on the modern town of Todmor sparking fears that the iconoclastic group would destroy the adjacent ancient site of Palmyra. On 21 May, some artifacts were transported from the Palmyra Museum to Damascus for safekeeping, 
A number of Greco-Roman busts, jewelry, and other objects looted from the museum have been found on the international market. ISIL forces entered Palmyra the same day. Local residents reported that the Syrian Air Force bombed the site on 13 June, damaging the northern wall close to the Temple of Beshaman. During ISIL's occupation of the site, Palmyra's theater was used as a place of public executions of their opponents and captives. Videos were released by ISIL showing the killing of Syrian prisoners in front of crowds at the theater. On 18 August, Palmyra's retired antiquities chief Khalid al-Assad was beheaded by ISIL after being tortured for a month to extract information about the city and its treasures. Al-Assad refused to give any information to his captors. Syrian government forces supported by Russian airstrikes recaptured Palmyra on March 27, 2016 after intense fighting against ISIL fighters. According to initial reports, the damage to the archaeological site was less extensive than anticipated, with numerous structures still standing. Following the recapture of the city, Russian demining teams began clearing mines planted by ISIL prior to their retreat. Following heavy fighting, ISIL briefly reoccupied the city on December 11, 2016, prompting an offensive by the Syrian army which retook the city on March 2, 2017. Government From the beginning of its history to the 1st century AD Palmyra was a petty sheikdom, and by the 1st century BC a Palmyrian identity began to develop. During the first half of the 1st century AD, Palmyra incorporated some of the institutions of a Greek city polis. The concept of citizenship demos appears in an inscription, dated to AD 10, describing the Palmyrenes as a community. In AD 74, an inscription mentions the city's bull senate. The tribal role in Palmyra is debated. During the first century, four treasurers representing the four tribes seems to have partially controlled the administration but their role became ceremonial by the second century and power rested in the hands of the council. The Palmyrene Council consisted of about 600 members of the local elite such as the elders or heads of wealthy families or clans, no 28 representing the city's four quarters. The council, headed by a president, managed civic responsibilities, it supervised public works including the construction of public buildings, approved expenditures, collected taxes, and appointed two archons lords each year. Palmyre's military was led by strategoid generals appointed by the council. Roman provincial authority set and approved Palmyra's tariff structure, but the provincial interference in local government was kept minimal as the empire sought to ensure the continuous success of Palmyrian trade most beneficial to Rome. An imposition of direct provincial administration would have jeopardized Palmyra's ability to conduct its trading activities in the east, especially in Parthia. With the elevation of Palmyra to a colonia around 213 to 216, the city ceased being subject to Roman provincial governors and taxes. Palmyra incorporated Roman institutions into its system while keeping many of its former ones. The council remained, and the strategos designated one of two annually elected magistrates. This duumvirai implemented the new colonial constitution, replacing the archons. Palmyra's political scene changed with the rise of Odinatus and his family. An inscription dated to 251 describes Odinatus' son Heronias Ras Lord of Palmyra Exarch in the Greek section of the inscription and another inscription dated to 252 describes Odinatus with the same title. Note 29 Odinatus was probably elected by the council as Exarch, which was an unusual title in the Roman Empire and was not part of the traditional Palmyrene governance institutions. Whether Odinatus' title indicated a military or a priestly position is unknown, but the military role is more likely. By 257 Odinatus was known as a consularis, possibly the legatus of the province of Phoenix. In 258 Odinatus began extending his political influence, taking advantage of regional instability caused by Sasanian aggression. This culminated in the Battle of Edessa, Odinatus' royal elevation and mobilization of troops, which made Palmyra a kingdom. The monarchy continued most civic institutions, but the Duumvirai and the council were no longer attested after 264. Odinatus appointed a governor for the city. In the absence of the monarch, the city was administered by a viceroy. Although governors of the eastern Roman provinces under Odinatus' control were still appointed by Rome, the king had overall authority. During Zenobia's rebellion, governors were appointed by the queen. Not all Palmyrenes accepted the dominion of the royal family. A senator, Septimius Hadutin, appears in a later Palmyrene inscription as aiding Aurelian's armies during the 273 rebellion. After the Roman destruction of the city, Palmyra was ruled directly by Rome, and then by a succession of other rulers, including the Burids and Ayubids, and subordinate Bedouin chiefs primarily the fatal family, who governed for the Mamluks. Military Due to its military character and efficiency in battle, Palmyra was described by Arafan Shahid as the Sparta among the cities of the Orient, Arab and other, 
and even its gods were represented dressed in military uniforms. Palmyra's army protected the city and its economy, helping extend Palmyrean authority beyond the city walls and protecting the countryside's desert trade routes. The city had a substantial military, Zabdabel commanded a force of 10,000 in the 3rd century BC, and Zenobia led an army of 70,000 in the Battle of Emesa. Soldiers were recruited from the city and its territories, spanning several thousand square kilometers from the outskirts of homes to the Euphrates Valley. non pomyrene soldiers were also recruited, a Nabataean cavalryman is recorded in 132 as serving in a Pomyrene unit stationed at Anna. Palmyra's recruiting system is unknown, the city might have selected and equipped the troops in the Stratagoi led, trained and disciplined them. The Stratagoi were appointed by the council with the approval of Rome. The royal army in the mid-3rd century AD was under the leadership of the monarchated by generals, and was modeled on the Sasanians in arms and tactics. The Pomyrenes were noted archers. They used infantry while a heavily armored cavalry climb and area I constituted the main attacking force. Note 30 Palmyra's infantry was armed with swords, lances and small round shields. The Clybenarii were fully armored including their horses, and used heavy spears contos 3.65 meters 12.0 feet long without shields. Relations with Rome Citing the Pomyrene's combat skills in large, sparsely populated areas, the Romans formed a Pomyrene auxiliary to serve in the Imperial Roman army. Vespasian reportedly had 8,000 Pomyrene archers in Judea, and Trajan established the first Pomyrene auxilia in 116 a camel cavalry unit. Alabama Iulpia Dromedariarum Pomyrenorum. Pomyrene units were deployed throughout the Roman Empire, No. 31 serving in Dacia late in Hadrian's reign, and at El Cantara in Nomidion Mesia under Antoninus Pius. During the late 2nd century Rome formed the Cohors 20 Pomyrenorum, which was stationed in Dura Europo. Religion Palmyra's gods were primarily part of the northwestern Semitic pantheon, with the addition of gods from the Mesopotamian and Arab pantheons. The city's chief pre-Hellenistic deity was called Bol, an abbreviation of Bala Northwestern Semitic Honorific. The Babylonian cult of Bel Marduk influenced the Pomyrene religion and by 217 BC the chief deity's name was changed to Bel. This did not indicate the replacing of the Northwestern Semitic Bol with a Mesopotamian deity, but was a mere change in the name. Second in importance after the supreme deity, were over 60 ancestral gods of the Pomyrene clans. Palmyra had unique deities, such as the god of justice and Ephka's guardian Yibel, the sun god Malakbel, and the moon god Aglibol. Palmyrenes worshipped regional deities, including the greater Levantine gods Astarte, Balamun, Bashaman and Atar goddess, the Babylonian gods Nabu and Nergal, and the Arab Azizos, Asu, Sams and Alat. The deities worshipped in the countryside were depicted as camel or horse riders and bore Arab names. The nature of those deities is uncertain as only names are known most importantly Abgal. The Pomyrene pantheon included Ginesim were given the designation Gad, a group of lesser deities popular in the countryside, who were similar to the Arab Jinn and the Roman genius. Gine were believed to have the appearance and behavior of humans, similar to Arab Jinn. Unlike Jinn, however, the Gine could not possess or injure humans. Their role was similar to the Roman genius tutelary deities who guarded individuals and their caravans, cattle and villages. Although the Pomyrenes worshipped their deities as individuals, some were associated with other gods. Bel had Astarte Belti as his consort, and formed a triple deity with Aglibel and Yibel who became a sun god in his association with Bel. Melikbel was part of many associations, pairing with Gad Taimi and Aglibel, and forming a triple deity with Bel Shaman and Aglibel. Palmyra hosted an Akita spring festival each Nisan. Each of the city's four quarters had a sanctuary for a deity considered ancestral to the resident tribe. Malik Bel and Aglibol sanctuary was in the Khmer quarter. The Beshaman sanctuary was in the Mazan quarter, the Asu sanctuary in the Matabal quarter, and the Atar goddess sanctuary in the fourth tribe's quarter. No. 32. The priests of Palmyra were selected from the city's leading families, and are recognized in busts through their headdresses, which have the shape of Apollos adorned with laurel wreath or other tree made of bronze, among other elements. The high priest of Bel's temple was the highest religious authority and headed the clergy of priests who were organized into collegia each headed by a higher priest. The personnel of Efka Springs Sanctuary dedicated to Yaibel belonged to a special class of priests as they were oracles. Palmyra's paganism was replaced with Christianity as the religion spread across the Roman Empire, and a bishop was reported in the city by 325. Although most temples became churches. The Temple of Alat was destroyed in 385 at the order of Maternus Synergy as the Eastern Praetorian Prefect. After the Muslim conquest in 634 Islam gradually replaced Christianity, 
and the last known bishop of Palmyra was consecrated in 818. Melikbel and the Roman Sol Invictus In 274, following his victory over Palmyra, Aurelian dedicated a large temple of Sol Invictus in Rome. Most scholars consider Aurelian Sol Invictus to be of Syrian origin, either a continuation of Emperor Elagabalus' cult of Sol Invictus Elagabalus, or Melikbel of Palmyra. The Palmyrene deity was commonly identified with the Roman god Sol and he had a temple dedicated for him on the right bank of the Tiber since the 2nd century. Also, he bore the epithet Invictus and was known with the name Sol Sanctissimus, the latter was an epithet Aurelian bore on an inscription from Capena. The position of the Palmyrene deity as Aurelian Sol Invictus is inferred from a passage by Zosimus reading in the magnificent temple of the sun he i.e. Aurelian embellished with votive gifts from Palmyra, setting up statues of Helios and Bel. Three deities from Palmyra exemplified solar features Malik Bel, Yaibel, and Shamash, hence the identification of the Palmyra in Helios appearing in Zosimus' work with Malik Bel. Some scholars criticize the notion of Malik Bel's identification with Saul Invictus. According to Gaston Halsberg, the cult of Malik Bel was too local for it to become an imperial Roman god, and Aurelian's restoration of Bel's temple and sacrifices dedicated to Malik Bel were a sign of his attachment to the sun god in general and his respect to the many ways in which the deity was worshipped. Richard Stoneman suggested another approach in which Aurelian simply borrowed the imagery of Malik Bel to enhance his own solar deity. The relation between Malik Bel and Sol Invictus cannot be confirmed and will probably remain unresolved. Economy Palmyra's economy before and at the beginning of the Roman period was based on agriculture, pastoralism, trade, and serving as a rest station for the caravans which sporadically crossed the desert. By the end of the 1st century BC, the city had a mixed economy based on agriculture, pastoralism, taxation, and, most importantly, the caravan trade. Taxation was an important source of revenue for the Palmyrene government. Caravaneers paid taxes in the building known as the Tariff Court where a tax law dating to AD 137 was exhibited. The law regulated the tariffs paid by the merchants for goods sold at the internal market or exported from the city. Note 33. Classlessist Andrew M. Smith too suggests most land in Palmyra was owned by the city, which collected grazing taxes. The oasis had about 1,000 hectares 2,500 acres of irrigable land, which surrounded the city. The Palmyrenes constructed an extensive irrigation system in the northern mountains that consisted of reservoirs and channels to capture and store the occasional rainfall. The most notable irrigation work is Harbaka Dam which was constructed in the late 1st century AD. It is located 48 kilometers 30 miles southwest of the city and can collect 140,000 cubic meters 4,900,000 cubic feet of water. The countryside was intensively planted with olive, fig, pistachio and barley. However, Agriculture could not support the population and food was imported. After Palmyra's destruction in 273, it became a market for villagers and nomads from the surrounding area. The city regained some of its prosperity during the Umawe era, indicated by the discovery of a large Umawe souk in the colonnaded street. Palmyra was a minor trading center until its destruction in 1400, according to Sharaf ad-Din Ali SD, Timur's men took 200,000 sheep and the city was reduced into a settlement on the desert border whose inhabitants herded and cultivated small plots for vegetables and corn. Commerce During the first centuries AD, Palmyra's main trade route ran east to the Euphrates where it connected at the city of Hit. The route then ran south along the river toward the port of Cherax Spasinu on the Persian Gulf, where Palmyrene ships traveled back and forth to India. Goods were imported from India, China, and Transoxiana, and exported west to Emesa or Antioch then the Mediterranean ports from which they were distributed throughout the Roman Empire. In addition to the usual route some Palmyrene merchants used the Red Sea, probably as a result of the Roman Parthian Wars. Goods were carried over land from the seaports to a Nile port, and then taken to the Egyptian Mediterranean ports for export. Inscriptions attesting a Palmyrene presence in Egypt date to the reign of Hadrian. Since Palmyra was not on the main trading route which followed the Euphrates, the Palmyrenes secured the desert route passing their city. They connected it to the Euphrates Valley, providing water and shelter. The Palmyrene route connected the Silk Road with the Mediterranean, and was used almost exclusively by the city's merchants, who maintained a presence in many cities, including Dura Europo in 33 BC, Babylon by AD 19, Seleucia by AD 24, Dendera, Coptos, Bahrain, the Indus River Delta, Merv, and Rome. The caravan trade depended on patrons and merchants. Patrons owned the land on which the caravan animals were raised, providing animals and guards for the merchants. The lands were located in the numerous villages of the Palmyrene countryside. 
Although merchants used the patrons to conduct business, their roles often overlapped and a patron would sometimes lead a caravan. Commerce made Palmyra and its merchants among the wealthiest in the region. Some caravans were financed by a single merchant, such as Mail Agrippa who financed Hadrian's visit in 129 and the 139 rebuilding of the Temple of Bell. The primary income generating trade good was silk, which was exported from the east to the west. Other exported goods included jade, muslin, spices, ebony, ivory and precious stones. For its domestic market Palmyra imported variety of goods including slaves, prostitutes, olive oil, dyed goods, myrrh and perfume. Excavations Palmyra was visited by travelers such as Pietro della Valle between 1616 and 1625. Jean Baptiste Tavernier in 1638 and many Swedish and German explorers. Its first scholarly description appeared in a 1696 book by Abednego Seller. In 1751, an expedition led by Robert Wood and James Dawkins studied Palmyra's architecture. French artist and architect Louis Francois Cassis conducted an extensive survey of the city's monuments in 1785, publishing over a hundred drawings of Palmyra's civic buildings and tombs. Visits by travelers and antiquarians continued, including one made by Lady Hester Stanhope in 1813, and another by Lady Strangford and artist Carl Hogg in 1859. Pomeria was photographed for the first time in 1864 by Louis Vignet. In 1882, the Pomirene Tariff, an inscribed stone slab from AD 137 in Greek and Pomirene detailing import and export taxation, was discovered by Prince Semyon Semyonovich of Bamali Klazareb in the Tariff Court. It has been described by historian John F. Matthews as one of the most important single items of evidence for the economic life of any part of the Roman Empire. In 1901, the slab was gifted by the Ottoman Sultan Abdul Hamid II to the Russian Tsar and is now in the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg. Paul Myra's first excavations were conducted in 1902 by Otto Puchstein and in 1917 by Theodore Wiegand. In 1929, French General Director of Antiquities of Syria and Lebanon Henri Arnold Sarig began large-scale excavation of the site, interrupted by World War II, it resumed soon after the war's end. Sarig started with the Temple of Bell in 1929 and between 1939 and 1940 he excavated the Agora. Daniel Schlumberger conducted excavations in the Pomirene Northwest countryside in 1934 and 1935 where he studied different local sanctuaries in the Pomirene villages. From 1954 to 1956, a Swiss expedition organized by UNESCO excavated the Temple of Belshaman. Since 1958, the site has been excavated by the Syrian Directorate General of Antiquities, and Polish expeditions led by many archaeologists including Kazimierz Michalowski until 1980 and Michael Galikowski until 2011. The stratigraphic sounding beneath the Temple of Bell was conducted in 1967 by Robert Dumenil Dubuisson who also discovered the Temple of Balaman in the 1970s. The Polish expedition concentrated its work in the camp of Diocletian while the Syrian Directorate General of Antiquities excavated the Temple of Nabu. Most of the Hypogea were excavated jointly by the Polish expedition and the Syrian Directorate, while the area of Efka was excavated by Jean Starkey and Jafar al-Hassani. The Pomirene irrigation system was discovered in 2008 by Jurgen Christian Meyer who researched the Pomirene countryside through ground inspections and satellite images. Most of Palmyra still remains unexplored especially the residential quarters in the north and south while the necropolis has been thoroughly excavated by the Directorate and the Polish expedition. Excavation expeditions left Palmyra in 2011 due to the Syrian civil war. In 1980, the historic site including the necropolis outside the walls was declared a World Heritage Site by the UNESCO. In November 2010 the Austrian media manager Helmut Thoma admitted looting a Palmyrene grave in 1980, stealing architectural pieces for his home. German and Austrian archaeologists protested against the theft.